Hi Dana, it's Miss Nikki Ann. Um, I just wanted to respond. I think I, was it a couple years ago? I made a similar, um, response video to the same kind of topic that you have posted. And I find it, I don't know, saddening that for some reason <laughs> you attract these people on Facebook who just refuse to like not come to your page. Like how hard is it for them to just not come to your page? You're a chronically ill person. Um, yes, it's invisible and you know that you're chronically ill. Who would be so cruel? I don't have a Facebook account so I don't know about the culture on Facebook. Every once in a while, Twitter will, Twitter will get out of hand, but not much. It doesn't happen often. Um, but I just can't believe it. You know, I, I can chime in on corporate culture and work life and water cooler talk because I've lived it. But before being chronically ill, if my mom who had survived breast cancer but survived it because of tamoxifen and all these other meds she took post, you know, um, treatment, which was radiation and chem chemotherapy and so forth. She took, wow, seven years of meds. I never once tried to tell her that I understood. Nope. <laughs> And was more than happy to be a listening ear. You know, what happened to the compassion for sick people? You know, I don't understand. I mean, I feel as if the faster times are moving, the less time people have to be compassionate. And I, I really don't think it's always been this bad. I think with social social media has created the ability for people to um, speak agitations and immature um, thoughts um, before uh, thinking. I think it's, it's so easy to press a button if you're having a bad day and type up something or put a video out there and put nasty words out there and then have to defend your own self because you know you at the time were just putting what you felt, but then defending your immaturity and your premature um, comments about something that you haven't experienced firsthand. Um, as a chronically ill person, number one, and then maybe as a caregiver, number two. Um, and everyone's experience is different. Like, mine is a progressive thing. I do not um, feel sad. I don't think like if I have a flare or something more mental, it's a natural process. Meaning I haven't delved um, too deep for too long. So my sadness or whatever about illness would probably mirror that of someone who's going through a regular mental crisis about life as we do if they're just healthy and working. I mean, life has its ebbs and flows. And now that I've gotten used to um, my illness, um, I just the acceptance it. When you can accept it so well, that's all people tell you in the beginning, you know. you got to get used to it. You'll get used to it. And then once you get used to it, people are just fickle. They sh are shifty and they shift from one thing to the next. And at first is, you know, grieve. You gotta get over it. And when you do, and then you're just living your life as a chronically ill person and you speak about your current life, I don't, what else am I supposed to talk about? You know, like, I don't know what the, I talk about my interests, but I also talk about my life. If someone calls me, what, uh, my life is like in this room, in a doctor's office, and so it's easier, and that's why we lose a lot of friends. 
it's because we no longer have the same interests. My health is of big interest to me. And you'll find that a lot of healthy people, their health is not a big interest to them because they have it. But once you don't have it, <laughs> everyone talks about like around a specific holiday, Thanksgiving. I've got my diaphragm is weakening from my dysautonomia progressing. So give me a second. I haven't talked this much. It's the shame. So there'll be this sniffling. Don't worry about it. But what was I going to say? But right, around the holidays when they're going to change their eating habits or lose weight or, you know, it's this um, dream state of health. Uh, after Christmas, it's about the future of their health. Um, what they're going to do. That's when they have interest. You know, I want to lose weight. Well, right now you're not that weight. You still have to lose it. So, you know, but when they're living in the moment of their their health, they're not talking uh, uh, about it. They just don't. They really could say, you know, I feel kind of, I feel good today. How are you? I feel great. You know, I woke up this morning, my legs, I went running, and it was this, that. But they generally don't because they're occupied with physically being able to live a basically normal life. And um, we are blessed, whatever word you want to use, with um, living this life. And I say that because if, if you are, I'm going to say the word lucky, if you are lucky, to have an experience with chronic illness, it will make you humble and compassionate and patient and bring out all of your demons and your doubts and your fears. It will really show your true, genuine self to you. It will. And that is a gift that people with health don't often get because they're too busy living with living a healthy life and it's okay there's it's okay to be healthy <laughs> and you know you don't want to talk about your health all the time even though you're so lucky to have it even though you're so lucky to have it if you don't want to talk about your health your great health don't you know or if you want to talk about work or your kids all the time and all this and and if I want to talk about and text with friends about my health and my kids and my experience with my child is going to be different than a person who doesn't have a chronic illness. So my chronic illness exists 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. There's never a good day. You know what I'm saying? So it's always affecting me and I have to maneuver and work around that. So it all gets mixed up into this wonderful gumbo, you know? Everyone's life is that way. And you should be able to talk about your life. Not just on a specific day, not just on YouTube, um, where people seem to be more, I don't know, impatient with this stuff on YouTube. But on your Facebook, it, it's your Facebook page. Talk about what the hell you want to talk about. And the people should not visit. Stop visiting. It's okay. We're used to losing friends. Hello, healthy people. And also sick people who don't like to talk about it. It's okay. We're used to losing friends simply because we don't want to go around pretending about something else. This is the life we live. And it's okay if you have to, to leave us. Um, I've been left. I've got not much left, but it's okay. And you don't have to view my videos or whomever. So just go do what you want to do. It's okay. I prefer that than for you to go to my friend Dana's page and bash her about how she should approach her life and what personality she should have about her life. Who's to say something like that? And I don't want to be all, you know, if I had fed into that, all the talk people told me, Nikki, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to realize, oh my gosh, I feel better. 
I've been dealing with this since 2004, really actively, but in 2008 is when it really hit. It hasn't happened, and now it's progressing. I'm so happy, and when I heard people say that to me, I never believed, I never, I never believed that that was the way life worked, <laughs> meaning some of us will get sick and get well. Some of us will get sick and get sicker. Some of us will get sick and just kind of stay at that level of sick. So when I heard it, I'm like, I don't know which one I am. And I'm not going to sit here and feed myself some poppycock about what I think I am. I'm going to see what is. I'm going to do the best I can for my body. A lot of healthy people don't do that. And when I was healthy, I did the best for my body. I was healthy. Vegan, uh, exercise. So I hate the whole, you know, thing about deconditioning. I ain't never been deconditioned. You know, so, let's just live. And again, my point is, even if you are a person with a chronic illness, and it is not your cup of tea, to be a lot of, around a lot of chronically ill people, don't do that to yourself. If that's depressing you, don't do it. It doesn't depress me. I felt honored the other day when someone reached out to me through text and I actually called them back and I could help. I felt honored when she who feels picked up the phone when I was in urgent care a few days ago barely able to breathe, passing out at the counter, and there was someone to advocate for me. She called people to me. I need that support. I need it. Because especially with dysautonomia, and it's hard to explain to doctors, you need an ad. I need this. I don't feel sad about my life. I feel blessed. Look at the amazing friends I've made who she who feels, Dana, I know these people would have been friends with me before. I would have been friends with these people anyhow. And now I'm friends with them during one of the toughest parts of my life. That is great. I found that. These people don't even have to be in town and they're more help to me than my neighbors or family, close friends nearby. But if it makes you sad to talk about your illness and hear about other people's, you need to do something that doesn't make you sad. That's important. We're all different. I don't mind talking about it. I don't mind people calling me about it because I don't feel as if it's, I'm not trying to get rid of something that's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm waiting patiently on the research, doing my best. If they find a cure, fine. If they don't, I still have to be fine with that. And it, I don't want dysautonomia and chronic illness to be a sad thing. It's not sad for me. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm suffering necessarily. I know we throw that word around, but I don't really feel like I'm suffering. I feel like I'm living with a chronic illness. And just like healthy people have a bad day, chronic illness has an extra bad day. Because <laughs> it's already like a bad day, but just an extra bad day when it's having its bad day. But see, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. And the two people whom I spoke to on the phone this week who have progressed dysautonomia, we were laughing. When I get on the phone with my cousin who doesn't have dysautonomia, she's laughing. I, I, laugh, at, I laugh at my dysautonomia. But that doesn't mean I stop talking about it because that's what I want to do. And I would prefer for any of my viewers who don't don't enjoy that, you know, and want don't want stop. You can unsubscribe. It's okay. It's healthy for you to go and find your path and your route. We all have different ones, but for me, denial is not one of them, and I can't play that one and try to convince myself of some things that may never happen in my lifetime. A cure could come. It could come couple of generations from now. Who's to say? Who's to say? And that's going to be it. I just, whenever I hear, like the fact that, again, Dana has someone who just could not turn away from the page. It's an option. It's social media. You do not have to befriend everyone. And you can, there are times where I do go through a phase of, you know, 
I'm going to cut back on dishonoring on your awareness and everything. There's something else I need to do. I will unfollow for a while. And then when I'm ready to re-enter, it's usually like a month later, I'll put everyone back on because there's other stuff I follow on YouTube besides chronic illness. So I'll just kind of remove the chronic illness bit. And then I'll put everybody back on when I'm ready. I love them just the same. I went on a vacation, basically. It's natural. It's normal. Tell your story. Tell them raw. Tell them how you want to tell them. I don't mind hearing them. I don't mind hearing some chronic illness people who want to talk about something else. I mean, you know, Jada Barbie is always hooking herself up. And just do what looks best for you. And when I'm tired and I need a break, I'm not going to blame that on you for living your life. I'm just going to say that. I need a break. Alright. Hi, Mom. Yeah, I'm okay.